In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the age of all ages, Amen. Today is the Sunday after the Holy Nativity Feast, and it's the first Sunday of the Coptic month of Tuba. The Church arranged a reading from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 2, verses 13 to 23. The same passage is repeated twice throughout the year. We read it on Tuba 3rd, which is last Friday, and this is the day we celebrate the martyrdom of the children of Bethlehem. And also we read it on 24 of Bashans, and this is June 1st, this is the day we celebrate the visit of the Holy Family to Egypt. And those two things, those two stories were mentioned in this passage. But the church arranged this passage specifically today, the Sunday after the Nativity Feast, to declare something. To declare that the salvation was for all people, all nations, not only the Jews, but also the Gentiles, for everyone. And that's how we see the readings, the whole readings talking about that salvation was for everyone. Look at the Psalms that we read in the Vesper. You will see the Psalm that we read yesterday. O clap your hands, all you peoples, all people, shout to God with the voice of triumph. And also today's liturgy in the Psalm we read, the Lord has made known his salvation, his righteousness he has revealed in the sight of the nations. And that's how the salvation was for everyone. The incarnate God came and dwelt in us, became man, taking the form of man to give everyone this blessing. And what's this in it for us? In his incarnation, we became children of God. We are now called children of God because of God came and incarnate. And that's how St. Athanasius said in his book of the Incarnation, he said, the Son of God became Son of Man so that man might become Son of God. The Son of God became Son of Man so that man, human, might become Son of God. Through this Incarnation, we became children of God. He gave us this privilege to be his children, to be his children. In today's Catholic epistle from the first epistle of St. John chapter 3, talks about this idea of being children of God. The first thing, St. John in his epistle chapter 3 verse 1, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. This privilege was given to us. We did not acquire. He gave us to be his children. And that's an honor, a glory. Imagine when someone, a man goes and proposes to a woman. And before marriage, the family, they ask, who is this man? What's his family, his origin? And they ask about him. Imagine if you go and say, I am a child of God. We are children of God. It's an honor. It's a glory for us. But this privilege that were given to us as children of God acquire also for us to be responsible for this, for us to reflect our Father, for us to reflect God himself. St. John the Evangelist said, John 1 verse 10, the world did not know him. The world did not know him. And that's one of the criteria to be children of God. The world did not, does not know us. And who is the world? People who are attached to the world. People who are following the world principles. 
people who lives with pleasures and lust those are the world the world does not know us as a children of God same as he did not the world did not know him did not know Christ the Lord Jesus Christ emphasizes in John 17 O righteous father the world does not know you does not know you it did not know you to know God is to love him and to obey his commandments and that's what John 8 says if God he said to the to the Jews when he told them if God were your father you would love me for I proceeded forth <coughs> excuse me and came from God because you are not able to listen to my word to know him is to love him and to listen to his word and now when when were we called children of God when every one of us was called a child of God since God incarnated to redeem all humanity does that mean that all humanity became children of God everyone become ch child of God no St. Paul says in Galatians chapter 3 for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus to believe in him for as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ and to be baptized those who believe in him and God baptized they are children of God and we as believers we were baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit became member of this body of the Lord the body of Christ and in that day of baptism we put off that old man all the former conduct and we put on a new man and that new man that was created according to God <coughs> that new man is the true righteousness and holiness so we were given that quality to live as a children of God in righteousness and holiness in that day of baptism on that day we put on the old man and we put we put off the old man and we put on the old man that day and on that day we were given that quality to live as children of God on that day also we were anointed by the Holy Mayroon the Holy Spirit dwelled in us and that's why this is the first responsibility for us every one of us have three responsibilities according to this passage from first john chapter 3 that we read in the catholic epistle the first thing and everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure purity we were given this quality to be pure but st john says purifies himself can any one of us purify ourselves on our own no we cannot but the meaning of purifies himself to emphasize the participation of us in that act to emphasize that every one of us has to do this act of purity same as in believing him and baptizing and we were chrismated we put on the we put off the old man and we put on the old man again in this also through repentance and confession sacrament we emphasize that every one of us has to participate in that behavior on that act of repentance and confession yes it is a gift but everyone has to take this gift yes God gave us this gift but every one of us has to use it Saint Augustine said you purify you purify yourself not of yourself but of him who comes that he may dwell in you the second thing to be children of God to be responsible for this 
As St. John says, whoever has been born of God does not sin. Does not sin. Does not sin doesn't mean that we are not sinless. It means that we are given this quality again as children of God, taking that rebirth in baptism, taking the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. We have this quality to do not sin. If we are given God, if we are giving the Holy Spirit to work in us and with us. And every one of us has a free will. Because of our free will, we do whatever we want. And that's our choice. We choose not to be sinless or we choose to sin. But this is the second thing as children of God. One is purity and two is sinless. And the third thing is righteousness. He said, he who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. It's not only not to do the sin. This is like we call it like negative approach to avoid the sin or not to do the sin or to resist. But no, it's also the positive approach is righteousness, to do what is right and to practice righteousness, same as God himself, he is right. God gave us this quality through the Holy Spirit for every one of us to do righteousness. And that's why the Holy Spirit has fruits. If we allow the Holy Spirit to work in us and we accept and we responded to the work of the Holy Spirit in us, we will bring forth fruits. As Saint Paul says in Galatians 5, 22 and 23, if you allow this, the fruit of the Spirit, love, you will love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Today, as we celebrate the birth of Christ in the first Sunday after the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, we celebrate this great privilege of being his children. Being his children is a gift by God. And as Saint Athanasius says, that son of God became son of man, so that man might become son of God. Glory be to him forever and ever. Amen.